Welcome to Conversations on Faith and Family, a faith-based podcast for parents and marriages looking how to manage and balance life with greater ease and fulfillment. Here are your hosts, Manuel and Raylene. Hi guys, welcome to another episode here on Conversations. We're excited to have you. I told you last week when we had Jason on that this month and the coming weeks was going to be really exciting. Um, We're taking a break from our series that we had previously to have some different guests on to be able to share their thoughts on a particular topic. Uh, Jason's topic was fantastic on forgiveness and um, I promise you today you're going to be even more blessed. Um, Raylene isn't going to be on today. She had to run an errand for the kids today Um, but the special guest that I have for you and I'm telling you, you're going to be blessed by this. All right, we have Emily Stroud on. And what's cool about Emily is, yeah, give her an applause. All right. But uh, Emily is a financial advisor, an entrepreneur, a speaker, an author, a mother. Uh, she's probably a rocket scientist, too, because it seems like she does it all. Um, but she specifically focuses on uh, risk management, on uh, financial planning, and, you know, she holds her MBA, so I know she knows her stuff. But more importantly, she just released her book. It's called Faithful Finance, 10 Secrets to Move from Fearful Insecurity to Confident Control. Now, we're just really happy to have Emily on here today. And uh, Emily, how's it going? How's the uh, weather there in Fort Worth? I lost you. You there, Emily? Yeah, I lost you. It, it, no, no some, worries. It's go. It's perfectly clear, and then it goes dead silent. So okay, uh, can you hear me now? I can. I'm sorry. I oh hope it no, happen. don't worry about it. Our producer's being a, a jerk over here, so don't worry about it. It's nothing on your end. <laughs> you know what I think? You know what I think it is? I think it's the first gloomy day we've ever had here in Southern California. It just oh. screws things up for everybody. <laughs> Not used to shade. So, so is it true that you can literally do everything? No, that is so far from the truth. I laughed when you said that. I do a little of this and a little of that, but not all at the same time. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, as you said, I'm Emily G. Stroud. I live in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, about three years ago, my husband and I bought a farmhouse. You there, Emily? full-time mom and we live in this farmhouse on about eight acres and this is actually where I got the inspiration to write this book because I also have an office attached to the side of the farmhouse and so we have clients that come out all the time and we talk about their dreams and their goals and their fears and their issues and what I have found is that everybody has an issue with money and so I started writing blogs and then it evolved into faithful finance the book and that just recently came out january 9th but i um my background is i own stroud financial management incorporated it's a boutique investment firm we do full service financial planning so i do life insurance and disability insurance and actual planning investment management and then um I raise my kids here, so I'm <laughs> doing it all from one place here at this farmhouse. It's fun. So you say that you don't do any, you don't do everything. In my opinion, it sounds like you're doing everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now you know. I know your your book focuses on finance. Now you know what really inspired you to write the book. Well, like I said a minute ago, I've been doing this now, I guess, twenty years, and over the years, I've counseled so many people, whether that's people that have just lost their spouse and they're recently widowed. So they're trying to figure out what their next chapter in life looks like from a financial standpoint, couples that are arguing often about money, and then just people that are starting out, people that are about to retire and they want to know how to get organized and ready for that chapter of life. And so what happened was I thought, man, there are best practices for managing money. And I wish that I could sit down with everybody and have a cup of coffee and share this information with them because I've found that it literally changes people. Yeah. 
their countenance changes. They learn to live in peace and not in fear as it relates to their finances. But the reality is there's so many people that I'll never get to actually meet in my everyday life. And so I felt called to write this book and share the information that I have learned over the years. And a lot of it I've learned from my clients by having a front row seat to their lives. And that is the heart behind Faithful Finance is that if we can get the message to as many people as possible, then I feel like we're doing a good work. Yeah, and you know, um, one thing that I noticed in my study is, um, you know, the the Bible mentions, you know, any type of finance or money uh, or the love of money more than even heaven. So I think the Bible really emphasizes on making sure that we, you know, really gather our finances and our laser focus and how we manage that. So I'm really happy that somebody sees that and is trying to apply practical principles and, and helping and guiding us in that right step. Now, you know, I know we hear about the financial side. Now, how can we really, you know, um, relate this to our faith as well? You know, because again, I know sometimes the love of money is, is something that the enemy uses to get to us, but you know, how can we apply faith to our finance on an everyday basis? Well, faith involves trusting God that he really does have a plan for your life. And even if you can't see the exact next steps, if you'll be quiet and pray and listen to him. And I also believe he speaks to us through his word in the Bible. And as you said, he talks about money almost more than any other topic besides love from what I have gathered. Yeah. And so I didn't reinvent the wheel on how to manage money wisely. He gives a lot of this information in the Bible. This is not new information. And I also think that fear is the root of a lot of problems for so many people. And money is one of the top three reasons that people argue, even divorce, they have anxiety. So money is a big source of tension for a lot of people. And then as far as my faith is concerned, I have learned that you can't be both grateful and fearful at the same time, Mm. right? Yep. Very good. If you learn to be grateful for what you have and then learn to manage it wisely, I also believe that your money is a tool to bless your family by providing well for them, but also to bless others that are out there in the mission field. We can't all be building a new school in Uganda, but what many people have told me over the years that are in full-time ministry, what they really need more often than not is money and volunteers. So time and money. And so if we can use our resources well by learning to manage our money, well, we'll have both more time and more money to support those that are already out there being the hands and feet of Christ. So my faith is a big part of this. Another reason I'm very passionate about this, is people say money is evil. Well, that could not be further from the truth. It's the love of money above all else that is evil. Money is actually awesome. Mm -hmm. Money is a tool to be used to, like I said, bless other people and bless your family. And if we can get people to change their mindset about how they view money, I think we can change the world in a very positive direction. Yeah, no, and um, yeah, I think you you said a key word there is um, fear. I think somehow fear and uh, our finances they just they're so commingled in a way that God never intended it to, to be. Now, you know, I know that you have your book out, uh, Faithful Finance, and you have ten secrets. And um, without giving us too much detail, um, you know, if somebody right now is listening and is in a financial, um, you know, in a financial need and maybe they need guidance in the right way, um, what maybe practical tip would you give them to steer them in the right direction? Well, the first step is always to get a budget in place, because if you're living in a spin cycle where each month you're living paycheck to paycheck or you're utilizing credit cards just to make ends meet, there's a problem there. You either don't know how much you're spending or you're spending more than you make. And so you have to spend less than you make, period. There is really no way around that. 
But for a lot of people, they don't know where to start with creating a budget. They don't know what to include. That's the biggest objection I've heard over the years. So what I've tried to do is take all objections away. And so I created a tool that I give away for free. And it's on my website, emilygstroud.com. And if you'll go there, there'll be a little white box that will pop up and you just enter your email address and I will personally send you a free budget worksheet. And so I encourage people to keep it simple. Don't overwhelm yourself for one to two months, however long it takes to really get a handle on your spending. Save every receipt that you spend. If you spend $4.50 at Starbucks, save the receipt. That's the only way you're really going to learn how much you're spending. And then start using my budget worksheet by plugging in your income, and then the different items and the expense categories that apply to each of us because everybody's situation is unique. Yeah. And then you've got to have something left over at the end of the month to save. That's the whole point of creating this budget is to figure out how can I either reduce my expenses, increase my income, or both to create discretionary income and then save that discretionary income so that I have a cash reserve. Because if you don't have a cash reserve – or rainy day fund, to put it in simple Mm -hmm. terms, then you're always just one crisis away from a major financial burden. So those two things are fundamental and just basic 101 financial planning. You need a budget and you got to save for um, a rainy day. Yeah, see it. And if somehow you can uh, keep my wife from only spending $4 at Starbucks on a monthly basis, <laughs> I, I will buy every book that you have. Uh, just don't okay. tell her I said that. <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I love the fact that the focus of the book is giving you practical tips, but also getting you from a, a, a lens and perspective from fear to confidence. And I think sometimes it's difficult, especially if you're living, I know many people that live, uh, paycheck to paycheck and God is meeting their need. Um, But at the same time, I still believe that God wants to exceed that. He wants to put you in a position where you grow financially because you can be a great asset to the kingdom of God. Um, When you do have finances, God, his word goes around the world through it. Even around our communities can be uh, a major factor as well. And, um, you know, I, I would encourage you, uh, emilygstroud.com. Uh, I'll go ahead and put it on, on all our social media for you to access. Now, um, we've been talking about the book this whole time. Um, where, do, where can we buy it? I want to buy one. So where can we uh, access one? Wonderful. You can get it on Amazon, Faithful Finance and Emily G. Stroud. Look that up and it will pop right up. I have an original book that um, was came out in 2015. This is the newest one. And so this is the one that came out January 9th, 2018. That's the one you're going to want to purchase. It's also available in all the major retail bookstores, such as Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, Mm -hmm. Lifeway Christian Bookstores, Mardell's, and it's even available at Sam's Club if you have one of those near where you live. But the fastest and easiest way I for all of us, it seems now is Amazon Prime comes right to your doorstep. I love using Amazon Prime all the time. So yeah, absolutely. So you can literally find it anywhere. I would encourage you, um, even if you feel like you're in a good financial place, I think reading the book will shed some light to be able to position you in in an even greater place. I you know, I was actually talking to my wife about that the other day. As soon as you feel Like you know everything is the perfect position to really fail. And we should always be willing to grow. We should all we should never be in a position where we know everything. And I I, I'm really excited to read it again. Emily G. Stroud dot com. Go ahead and visit and, um, you know, she'll have that free uh, that free budget tool for you to to use. So, uh, again, Emily, we thank you for coming on, and we we really just are blessed by the wisdom that you shared with us. Well, thank you so much for having me. It was my pleasure. All right, and maybe one of these days my wife and I will will have to have some coffee on your porch one of these days. I would love that. You're welcome anytime. (laughs) All right, Emily, take care. Bye-bye. Bye.
All right. Well, um, 